Hey, how's it going? Today I'm here to uh, install the USB to uh, gauge cluster on my uh, Jeep Wrangler. It's a 2021. Uh, I'm going to be going through the process of taking the dash apart and then getting the cluster out and installing the new inlay on the speedometer and odometer. So stay tuned for this. Your first step is going to be removing the kick plate just over here underneath. Uh, it's just clips that hold it in. So you're gonna have to pry in between here and right here. And that's gonna pop off and come off down. Now that you have that unclipped, the next step is going to have this piece come off now. It's the same idea. It's going to just unclip off using your pry tool. I'm just using this small pry tool. And uh, then we'll move on to the next step. Now the spot that I used to unclip this easily is, is right between here and this. I was able to pry in between there and pull out. You'll hear clicking almost like cracking sounds, but it's the clips pulling out. What I did is I just slowly worked across the bottom and top, pulling it out, and then it just pulled out from this side also and just fell down like this. The next step is going to be unclipping this plug and this plug here. Once you have that unclipped, you'll be able to get that out of the way. Now that you have the two plugs unplugged and you have that panel off, the next step is going to be taking off this screw, taking out this screw here and here. You'll need a seven millimeter socket for that to come off. Then you'll be able to unclip clip this and pull it off. Now that the two screws are out, you're able to just pull on the bottom and unclip the panel that goes around the screen. You'll hear a clicking sound whenever it comes off. I'm gonna move on to that process right now. You just lift and pull. I just wanna have two hands to do it so I don't crack anything. Now that you have that pulled off, the next step is going to be taking out this screw right here. This is what holds the dash together. That's the only screw holding it. The next step is we're going to be pulling the dash off. It's clips also. So I loosen this side by reaching in underneath, not in where the vents are, but you run your finger and across. I have it unclipped here, but I can show you just to show you. That is a separate piece here. Sorry, let's get the finger. All right, this is a separate piece, so don't be pulling there. This part is flush on top. You can reach under here and get your fingers in. And what I did is at about the halfway point of your steering wheel, straight up to this area, get your fingers in, it pinches, but pull towards you and it's gonna unclip. It'll pop out quite quickly. Then you just work your way here, see it's off so I can show you, you're not pulling on that area, you're actually pulling on the, the lip of this piece. And now I'm on the passenger side, feeding my fingers up underneath, it squeezes, it pinches, and you pull forward and it's going to fly off towards you. But this is what I mean, see how it is, how this is? This is flush right on here. So you're just reaching and getting in between the crack, the crevice, and getting your fingers in, and you'll feel pulling, and then psh, it'll pop off. Now this piece is off. Move on to the next step. Our next step is taking two screws out to get this panel off that goes around the steering wheel. Your first one is right here, and your second one is right here. 
it's still the seven millimeter uh, socket. Loosen those two and this will lift up and off. So once you have those two screws out, you're going to reach on the edge of this and pull it straight out and it's going to unclip on this side. You're going to do the same on this side, reaching in here and pulling straight out. It was hard to pull on, but uh, it unclipped. Whenever it's unclipped, this piece isn't coming off. You're just laying it forward. So you'll be able to get to the cluster. And then you move on to the next step. Now we're going to remove these four screws. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then this will be loose. You'll be able to unclip it and pull that off to the side. As you can see, I have it off. To show a demonstration, once you have those four screws off, what you're doing is you're pulling over here and it's going to pop, unclip off on that side and you'll be reaching in over there and you'll be pulling towards yourself and it'll pop off and unclip off easily. Now that that piece is off all around the cluster, you have four screws to get at. One on this side, one underneath, right there. One right, let's make it clear, right there. And the other one is tucked underneath that plastic you unclipped. Sorry, can't get in there. Right there, and you'll see it. You'll actually see it. You just unscrew those four, then the cluster's gonna pull out towards you, but there's one wire that we will have to unclip from it. So now that the four screws are out, I pulled the cluster towards me. Uh, the easiest way I suggest is just uh, lowering your steering wheel with the adjustment and then pull it towards you. And this is the wire I was talking about that's plugged in. Uh, there's a push button at the bottom of it. You squeeze in and pinch and it will pull out. I'm just with one hand here. There we go. I pulled it out. And now your cluster is out. You're ready to uh, move on to going inside and installing the inlay. All right, we have the bezel set up inside now. Uh, I have my T9 bit that we're going to need to take out six screws at the back of the bezel. Uh, Here's what's going in. I'm going with light blue from uh, US Beto. Uh, the locations of the screws are along the outside of the bezel. You'll just be uh, unscrewing them all. And then there's going to be clips that we're going to unclip, which will be the next step. But here's your screws along the outside of the bezel so we can get in. Okay, we took the back panel off. Now we're going to pull off this piece. It unclips and you pull it off around the needle. It's going to come off this whole piece right here. I'm going to do that process right now. I just took that piece off. It was easy. You just pull up on it and then unclips off. The next step is going to be taking the needles out. So the next part is getting the needles out. Um, the first part that you're going to do is have the needle uh, pressed back where it normally sits. And you're going to mark a line on your OEM and lay. This one I already took out. I already have it marked. I did it to practice it, so I know how to take it out to show to you guys. Um, the process for that is taking the plastic piece that they give with the kit. It'll be tucked in in here. You'll find it at the back. 
what you're going to do, you're going to use a lot of pressure. It's going to be this, you tuck underneath and you hold on to the center and you pry up. You just have to pull straight up. It's hard to pull out, but you will get it. Let's try another angle. There, we're pried. Now we have the tool all the way in. That might make it easier. So now we have the needles pulled out. The next step is just going to be peeling off the inlay. I already started with one. At the back of it is like a glue, like a sticky glue. You'll hear it whenever you peel it off. I'll show you right here. So you just lift up, see how it's sticking? It's like a glue, don't worry about it, just pull on it. And it pulls off, just like that. Then you grab the right one. Get some of that glue there. There's also, I want to point out, that there's a hole here. That'll match up with the, the little pin sticking out. Line it up, then push down in the middle. And it'll uh, place itself in where it needs to be. And that's in there tight. Same on this side. Just do the same process. Peel it off, line up the pin, then push in the middle. And that's your inlay in there. We'll move on to the next step, which is putting a needle back in. Whenever you put this in, you're going to be turning counterclockwise and pushing down. You don't want to push too far. You're only going to go, uh, you're not going to have it tight up against the plastic. So here I go for the middle. Here the process of it turning. As I'm just pushing down lightly as I'm going around. And it will stop right where it was originally. See how it won't turn anymore? You've pressed down, it's pushed down. That's perfect. We'll move on to the next one. Just handle it so you can turn it counterclockwise. Push down like that. Then turn, you can hear it. Uh, squeaking. Just keep pushing as you're turning, not too hard. That one scared me for a second. Yeah, so make sure whenever it stops at the one like it did that you just keep turning, you'll feel it lock into the position that it's always sitting at. Now if you wanted to compare it to the original, you can hold this and use your line to see if it matches up. Let's see. Sorry, there, to the back. You measure the distance from your one to there. I'm sure there's an easier way, but the way I'm showing, it is showing it lined up exactly, so it is lined up with this to the actual uh, needle. You could do the same over here. I don't know if you can see the glare of the pen mark, but that's the pen mark that you made. So you're just going to line it up and make sure that it's actually lined up like that. That's the way it will be. The next step after doing that is putting this piece back on. Uh, remember that you had to tuck it in, or it was untucked under, so you tuck it back under, line it up, and there's clips that will line up here to it, sorry, there, I clicked it in on this side first, I haven't completely pushed down yet, now it will clip all in and push down. All lined up perfectly. Just, oh, see, you have to have it all clipped in firmly all around the edges. And that's the process of the needles going in. The next step will be putting this back on, which there's two clips on the top, two clips on the bottom. It'll clip together. 
Then you would put the six screws back in with your T9 screwdriver. I'm going to make sure that everything is clean and there's no fingerprints on it right now. Uh, so then you will proceed with putting this on, clipping it, and putting the screws in. So I cleaned the lens on the inside and outside. And I clipped it on both sides. It's now on. The next step will be putting your six screws back in. Then you'll be able to go back out to the Jeep and uh, do the process backwards of installing it all back in. Just follow the steps backwards. Now we're back in the Jeep. I uh, just placed it into the area where it goes. I uh, plugged it back in and I just screwed these four screws in lightly. So the next step will be tightening it and then putting all the paneling back on. So the next step is putting this panel in that covers up the dash. Remember, it just clips. You just clip it in and you're going to put these four screws in across the top. Now that you put the four screws in and that the top part of the dash is clipped in and screwed in, it's the small piece that wraps around the steering wheel. Remember, they were just clips that unclipped. So you're just going to push that clip back into the hole right about there and then push in and that'll be placed in. Now you have it clipped in and tucked in underneath the other part so it looks smooth. You will have two screws to put in here and right here. That will have all that secured. Then we're going to move on to clipping the dash back in and putting the one screw just above the display. And after that, lay your dash back up, up against it. You see how it's fitting in there perfectly. Push in and it'll clip right back in. Make sure all the clips go in. There's a clip here also on each end. Push that in, it'll be secure. Then you're just going to put this one screw in here. And that secures the dash. Now that you clipped in the dash, have it lined up and you tighten that screw up here. The next piece is going to be what goes around the monitor. See the clips? You're gonna line it up, pop it in, and then there'll be two screws to screw in right at the bottom. So that is clipped in and the two screws have been tightened. The next step will be the stereo and uh, heating controls. Remember we had to unplug two plugs, one here and one here. Your wires are still hanging down. Plug them in, make sure they click in. Then this doesn't have any screws. This is just going to click in, just like the top panel. So line it up, aim it for the holes, and push it in. Only after you have these, these two plugged in, though. Now that you have the two plugs plugged in, it's pushed in. It clipped in easily. And see how the inlay looks. I do have to clean the dash and everything with all the fingerprints. Uh, there's one piece left, the bottom of the dash. I have my aux beam switch control attached to that. Um, there's the clips. You're going to line it up just like you did with everything else down at the bottom. And it's going to clip in. Once that's clipped in, you're complete. Voila. Your usb -do inlay is installed. Not hard of a job. The install is now complete. As you can see, the needles are working. So this is the conclusion of the install for uh, usb -do inlay, speedometer inlay. 
Um, I was just gonna do a walk around, show you what the Jeep looks like. As you can see, I keep modifying it with lots of cheap blue coloring. The design trim is from uh, Designer Trims. Make sure uh, all the things I name here I have discount codes for. So follow me on Instagram or give me a message and I can uh, share discount codes. Uh, I got XD wheels with the F Good Rich tires. This is my Chief Blue Jeep. Lots of lighting in the front. It's all uh, aux beam. Got the light bar, the side lights. Oh, I don't have the headlights on, but that's also by X Beam. Three different colors adjustments for those also from Ox Beam. Oh, so thanks for uh, checking out the video. And uh, please subscribe and like. Uh, there's definitely going to be lots of installs coming for this Jeep, for my Challenger, and for my Charger. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.